you know what that music say? Yes, sir, Amos. That music say, good health to all from Rexall. The Amos and Andy Show, written by Joe Connolly and Bob Mosier, featuring Ernestine Wade, Johnny Lee, Amanda Randolph, Roy Glenn, Will Wright, Lillian Randolph, Jeff Alexander's music, yours truly, Harlow Wilcox, and starring radio's all-time favorites, Freeman Gosden and Charles Carell, Amos and Andy. How do you do, ladies and gentlemen? This is Freeman Gosden. Later in this program, you will hear from your Rexall family druggist about the biggest money-saving event of the year, Rexall's great one-cent sale that starts this coming Wednesday. This is the famous sale where you get two guaranteed Rexall products for the price of one, plus a penny. Here is your chance to really cut the cost of living. So this week, from Wednesday through Saturday, be sure to shop and save at your friendly Rexall drugstore. It's Rexall's great one-cent sale. Well, a whole week has gone by at the home of George Kingfish Stevens without an argument or a harsh word. Right now, Sapphire, Kingfish, and Mama sit in the living room. All is quiet and serene. Oh, what a wonderful week. No arguments, no fights. Oh, yes, Dalton. I ain't never been so happy and contented in my whole life. (laughs) Yeah, Mama. I gotta hand it to you. Sitting there in your rocking chair, you look just like Whistler's mother. (laughs) The only thing that might detract from the sweet artistic picture... Is your feet soaking in that pan of Epsom sauce there? Well, George, we have fought a lot in the past. But, of course, when we did, I was always good-natured about it. Yeah, you know, you're right, honey. Of course, uh, I was a little more good-natured about it than you was, though. Uh, George, dear, if you'll forgive me for correcting you, I is the good-natured one. Well, if you don't mind me expressing an opinion here, I... Must say that if you was good-natured, you was the nastiest good-natured person. I don't know. Now, see here, George Stevens. It so happens it's been my good nature that has preserved the sweetness and light in our marriage. You bum! <laughs> yes, you miserable weasel. Don't you tell my daughter she ain't good-natured. We has always been a good-natured family. And if you say once more that we ain't... I'm going to let you have it in the kisser with this pan of Epsom salt. Well, now, wait a minute. If we get any more good nature around here, the neighbors is going to call the riot squad again. <laughs> any man can be good natured if he spent his life sponging off a couple of poor women. Mama's right, George. Well, is that so? Well, let me tell you something. I could walk out of here right now and come back tonight with five or six hundred dollars in my pocket. Just like that. Five or six hundred dollars, huh? Well, here's your hat, and there's the door. And don't you come back till you got it, you Mr. Big Mouth. All right, I will. Hmm. I got to get $500 by the night. And I got to get it by using my ingenuity. Hmm. I wonder if I went back in there if they'd settle for a dollar and a quarter. I... <laughs> Hello? Hello? Uh, hello, is this the Everett Loan Company? Uh, the one that advertises over the television? Uh, money quick, no red tape? Uh, fine. Now, my name is George Kingfish Stevens, and I want to borrow $500. You want to know what? Where I work? Now, look, we ain't going to get no place if you're going to pull the red tape on me right off the bat, Mr. <laughs> well, I know you has rules, but... Mr. Everett, if you could just let me, uh, 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 hold the phone a minute, uh, somebody just come into office here. Uh, can I help you, madam? I'm looking for Mr. Wilson. Well, uh, no Mr. Wilson here. I want to telephone here. Wait a minute. Uh, hello, uh, Mr. Everett. 
About that knowing, I knows you as a man of kindness, of pity, and... Are you sure there's no Mr. Wilson here? I wrote to this address about paying him a $2,500 reward. Uh, like I, uh, begging him, Mr. Everetti, uh, uh, like, uh, hold the phone. <laughs> <laughs> Madam, uh, you say something about the uh, $2,500 uh, reward? No, no, $2,500. $2,500. Oh, yeah. Uh, Miss Everetti, uh, is you still there? Fine. Drop dead. <laughs> uh, Madam, pull up a chair here. Now, uh, about this $2,500, uh... Well, am I in the right place? Is this the Wilson Detective Agency? Uh, uh, uh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what it is already, yeah. That, that's well, it. then you know all about it from my letter. Your letter? Uh, well, now, uh, let me explain to you about the letter. You see, uh... uh uh, we being a detective agency here, we don't want no evidence laying around, so I done tore up your letter if I read it. See what I mean yeah, there? Yeah, yeah. Now, you better refresh my memory up on the thing. What, what was in the thing there? Uh, well, I see. Well, like I said in my letter, my husband, Reginald Simpson, deserted me 25 years ago. Deserted you, huh? Yes. And I've come into some money recently, so I'm prepared to pay your detective agency $2,500 if you can locate him. Oh, yeah, yeah. It all comes back to me now. Yeah, yeah. Well, now, don't worry. We'll locate the boy for you. Well, I imagine Reginald has changed a lot in 25 years. Mm -hmm. All I have to go on is just one picture of him. Now, this was taken on our honeymoon. Mm, let me see here. Oh, honeymoon in Alaska. I see he's leaning against the totem pole there. That's me. Oh, oh. <laughs> yeah, so it is. You never see a totem pole blowed up like that, I know. Uh, you ain't seen him for 25 years. Hmm. Now, you think you'll be able to locate him? You can see from the picture there that he's tall and thin and wears a straw hat. Yeah, but you know how peoples can change. I wouldn't be surprised if today he might very well be fat, dumpy, and wearing a derby, you know? <laughs> so you see, Andy, the whole thing is simple. All you got to do is to pose as this Reginald Simpson, and we can get the $2,500 reward. Well, I don't want to punch no holes in a good idea right off the bat, Kingfish, but seems to me it's ideas like this that make Leavenworth and San Quentin the big success they is today. <laughs> oh, now look, Andy, uh, there ain't no danger, you see. Uh, she thinks that I is a detective. See, she come into office by mistake. Yeah. Now, she ain't seen her husband in 25 years. Yeah, well, maybe that's all right. Uh, what did this Miss Simpson look like? Well, now, I got a picture right here, Andy. Uh, there she is, right there, on her honeymoon. Wow. She sure was a homely-looking young gal, all right. But say, look at there. That's a nice string of beads around her neck. What kind is they? Uh, let me look here. Uh, no, no, Andy, them ain't beads. It's just that the moles on her chin has kind of, uh, happened to grow in a semicircle there, you see? <laughs> what a mess. She is awful. Now listen, Andy. The years has done mellowed, Mrs. Simpson. She is a real dignified-looking old lady. Her face has sagged quite a bit, and now them moles give her a nice mutton chop effect. <laughs> she looks a little like Henry Clay. <laughs> Nothing doing, Kingfish. I ain't gonna be her long-lost husband, Reginald Simpson. Not with a face like that. Well, now, wait a minute, Andy. Listen. Now, look here. You look away from the picture a minute and think about that $2,500. Yeah. You got that in your mind there? Yeah. Fine. Now look back at the picture. Mm. What do you say, Andrew? Just call me Reggie. <laughs> uh, now you're talking, boy. Yeah, well, I like the $2,500, all right, but I still don't see how we're going to convince Mrs. Simpson that I was her husband. Leave it to me, Andy. Any man that could sell the Titanic for scrap three times in one year won't have no trouble unloading a hunk of junk like you. Now, you just... <laughs> Good evening. This is your Rexall family druggist with the kind of news I like to tell you. Next Wednesday morning, October 15th, Rexall's tremendous one-cent sale begins. From then until the closing of the stores, Saturday night, 
you can buy two guaranteed Rexall products for the price of one, plus a penny. Yes, a penny more buys twice as much. What's more, this offer applies to literally hundreds of drug and household needs. From aspirin to imported olive oil, from Christmas cards to bobby pins, from cold cream to stationery. But most important of all, these are Rexall products, and you can depend on any drug product that bears the name Rexall. So remember, friends, starting next Wednesday, a penny more buys twice as much at Rexall drugstores everywhere. You say you done phoned Miss Simpson and told her you found her long-lost husband? But that's right, Andy. And she be here in a half an hour for the tearful reunion, my boy. Yeah, but suppose she starts asking me questions about our marriage. I ain't gonna be able to answer them. After all, if we was married, we must have struck up some kind of acquaintanceship. <laughs> well, now, that's covered, Andy, old boy. You see, she thinks that I is a detective. So me and her has done worked out a plan. Mm. Now, she has got four questions that if you know the answer to, will prove you as her long-lost husband. Yeah, well, what is the question? Well, now, here's question number one. Now, listen, Andy, the first question is the state that you was married in, the state uh, you honeymooned in, and the state you deserted in. Mm -hmm. Now, the answer is to question number one, California, Washington, and North Dakota. California, Washington, and North Dakota. And the second question is the name of your three children. They is Mandy, Morton, and John. Mandy, Morton, John. Question number three, she's going to ask you, she's going to say, I once had an operation, what did they remove? And the answer is four gallstones. Four gallstones. Yeah, and the last question she's going to ask you is, she's going to say, what did you give me for a wedding present? And the answer to that is a silver fox jacket. Yeah, silver fox jacket. Now, you got it straight, Andy. Them is the four questions she going to ask you. Kingfish, I'll remember them answers word for word, or my name ain't Reggie Simpleton. Simpson, you fool. Oh, yeah. Yes, yes, Mrs. Simpson, allow me to introduce you up with your long-lost husband, Reginald. Oh, Reginald, after all these years, looking at you, I can hardly believe you's alive. Uh, likewise. <laughs> well, old Reg here look just the same, don't it, Mrs. Simpson? Well, I don't know. Years ago, he was so thin, and now he's so big and heavy. Yeah, well, now, your genuine long-lost husband was explaining that to me. Uh, right after he deserted you, why, he got a bad case of the bloating virus. <laughs> and he got that, why, the next thing he got was the puffy pleurisy. <laughs> and then lately he's had a touch of gout. So, with the bloating, the puffing, and the gouting, he is the flat swab that you see today. <laughs> But I would like to make certain he's really Reginald. Yeah, well, well I don't blame you about that. Uh, put him to the test there. Ask him them full vital questions you, you done worked out there. Yeah, that's right. Ask me anything. Very well. What were the names of our three children? California, Washington, and North Dakota. <laughs> well, I better ask you another one. Now, I once had an operation. What did they remove? A uh, silver fox jacket. <laughs> Well, what did you give me for a wedding gift? Four gallstones. What in the world is you talking about? You was giving me all the wrong answers. Well, what is you talking about? You giving me all the wrong questions. <laughs> just, just wait a minute, Cheryl. Let everybody calm down here. And let's see what done happen, Miss Simpson. I tell you what. You see, I think your long-lost husband here is all excited about meeting you. Now, let's quiet down here and start the whole thing over, will you? Yeah, let's do that. Yeah, yeah well, very well. I guess we is all a little excited. Yeah. Now, let's start all over again. Now, I had an operation. What did they take out? California, Washington, and North Dakota. <laughs> what? Now, 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 Mill Simpson, uh, wait a minute now. now just, just, just ask him another question, would you please, ma'am? What did you give me as a wedding gift? Mandy, Morton, and John. <laughs> Ridiculous 
anything I ever heard of. No, me. I was getting a headache. Uh, excuse me, Miss Simpson, uh, while I take your long lost husband over in the corner here. Uh, right this way, long lost husband. Come yeah, on. Okay. <laughs> What's wrong with you, you big dummy? You done messed a thing up. Well, she done switched the questions on me. <laughs> now, look, stupid. This means $2,500. And the next time she asks you a question, think before you answer the thing. Yeah, okay. I'll get it straight. You know something, Kingfish? What? She sure do look like Henry Clay. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Then. Well, uh, we is all right now, Miss Simpson. Well, this is your last chance. Reginald, what did you give me for a wedding present? A silver fox jacket. Hey, see there? Yeah. Oh, he really your husband already. Ask him another question. Then. All right. What's going on what were the names of our three children? Manny, Moe, and Jack. Oh. <laughs> what was that? Well, I, I mean, m- 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 Mandy, Morton, and John. Yeah, see there, Mr. Simpson? Oh, he got him 100%. Well, there you is. One long lost husband, signed, sealed, and delivered COD. Just make out to check the cash there. That's all. Right. Well, I'm just about convinced he is my husband, but I would like a day or two to think it over. Well, you would, huh? Well, you wouldn't want to sign the check and think it over while the check is clearing the bank, would you? No, but you'll be hearing from me. Goodbye, my Reginald. So long, Henry. I mean, uh. <laughs> What do you think, Kingfish? Well, now, don't worry, Andy. I think we got her. Wow, what a face. Kingfish, I bet Reginald is still running. <laughs> yeah, Andy, as soon as I see this picture in the newspaper of you and this item about... Mrs. Simpson finding a long-lost husband, I come over here to see you. Yeah, Amos, she done thunk it over and decided that I was her missing husband. Yeah, so you as fell for another of the Kingfisher schemes, Andy. Andy Brown, I is disgusted with you. You ought to be ashamed of yourself doing this for $2,500. Oh, you think we ought to get more money out of her, huh? <laughs> oh, look here, Andy Brown. You just going to get yourself in trouble. Uh, uh, oh, come in, Kingfish. Come well, in. well, hi there, Andy. Hi, Amos, sir. Uh... See the item in the newspaper? We're all set. Oh, yeah. Hey, you know I really fed up on you two pulling stuff like this. I don't even want to talk to you. So long. Hmm. Hmm. Nice fellow, that Amos, but he ain't got no business of mine. Well, I tell you, uh... Wait a minute, wait a minute. That must be Amos coming back. His conscience is bothering him. Come in. How do you do? I'm looking for a Mr. Reginald Simpson. Yeah, well, uh... I as Reginald Simpson. Oh, fine. I saw this item about you in the paper. I'm from the Bureau of Internal Revenue. (laughs) Mr. Simpson, we have a $900 back tax claim against you. And if it's not settled immediately, we're taking court action. Well, wait a minute here now. I ain't... Wait a minute. Shut up, you dummy. Uh, Mr. Simpson here will be very happy to settle the claim with the Bureau. Oh, fine. I'll stop back in a day or so and see if we can't wind this thing up. Yeah, we have it ready for you then. I'll see you in a couple of days then. Goodbye. Goodbye. Listen, Kingfish, why didn't you tell him I wasn't Mr. Simpson? Now, listen, you nitwit. If it come, if it come out that you ain't uh, Reginald Simpson, we lose the $2,500. Hmm. Now, all we got to do is to raise $900 to pay off this government fella. And then when we get to $2,500, we are still $1,600 to the good. Holy mackerel, these government taxes is really something. I ain't earned nothing in the last 25 years, but I owes them $900. Oh, yeah, <laughs> Now, here is your Rexall family druggist. Next Wednesday morning, October 15th, Rexall's greatest one-cent sale begins. The tremendous sale where you get two absolutely top-quality, guaranteed Rexall products for the price of one, plus a penny. Exactly how does that work? Well, for example, the regular price for a pint bottle of Rexall MI-31 mouthwash is 79 cents. But during the one-cent sale, you get two bottles for only 80 cents. You I mean I just add a penny, yet I get twice as much. Exactly. What's more, you'll find literally hundreds of these double bargains in our stores. Everything from rubbing alcohol to adhesive tape, from cosmetics to billfolds, plus more than 60 super specials on every type of household need. How long does this sale last? From next Wednesday morning till the closing of the stores Saturday night. Four miracle days when a penny more buys twice as much at Rexall Drug Stores everywhere. Well, 
we got to re is $900. Let me get in here and talk to Algonquin Jack Calhoun. Well, hi, you kingfish. Uh, say, Calhoun, I want to talk to you. Uh, uh, Calhoun, uh, what you doing there at your desk anyway? Who, me? Oh, I just sitting here tearing the paper off of cigarettes. Oh, yeah, I see them do that on the television. Uh, that's pretty good, ain't it? Yeah, but to tell you one thing, it's still a lot easier to smoke with the papers on. <laughs> yeah, I imagine it is, but look here, now look here, Calhoun, I got a big problem. Yeah. I got to raise $900 in a hurry. Well, now, ain't you got nothing you can borrow on, like insurance policies or something? No, no, I done borrowed on all my personal policies. The only policy I got left is the accident policy at the large hall, uh-huh. and I can't borrow on that. The only way I could get any money from that if yeah. somebody, one of the brothers, uh, fell in the large hall and, uh, yeah. and, uh, um... <coughs> Calhoun, does you think I could? I certainly do. <laughs> and Andy is the perfect one to take the dive. <laughs> the policy pays $500 now to the injured brother. Yes. Yeah. Now, if I can get the insurance man uh, over here to increase, i get him over there and have a talk with him to increase the thing to $900, then stage the accident. Yeah, yeah. And while the man from the insurance company is there, Andy can come in and claim he done broke his leg or something. You might even get a phony doctor to, 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 to back up the claim. Yeah, yeah. I hope it works. Because I got to get a hold of money to prove to my wife that I got brains. Wife trouble again, huh? Oh, yeah. You know, Kingfish, a thing like this makes me glad that I'm a bachelor. <laughs> uh, you know, Calhoun, uh, you has always been single, ain't you? Yeah. Well, in my youth, I was sort of a timid boy, Kingfish. Yeah, I used to wander out in the woods and frolic in the babbling brooks. You know, Kingfish, it wasn't until I was 17 years old that I learned about the birds and bees. Yeah, well, uh, how come you never got married, Calhoun? Well, I never could find a bird or a bee that I was that interested in. <laughs> well, there you are, Mr. Stevens. That raises the payments on your accident policy with our company to $900 per accident. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Peterson. Uh, nice of you to come over to the large hall here. Oh, that's perfectly all right. Service is our motto. Yeah, you say now the policy is in effect immediately. Yeah. Oh, not that we're expecting any accidents, but it's nice to know them things. In case the hand of fate stepped in and tripped up one of our loving brothers or something, you know. Oh, yes, yes, we can't be too careful. Well, I've got to be going. Well, must you be leaving so soon, uh... Thought you might want to stay around for the accident. I mean, uh, <laughs> uh what, what, what's your hurry, man? Well, I'm a little tired today. I've been in court most of the week. Oh, yeah, in court, yeah. Yes, you insurance fellas in court, uh, a lot, uh, while we're paying out money to people that hurt themselves and all that. <laughs> well, uh, no, no. This week I've been in court prosecuting several phony claims. Oops, there, there, there. Uh, my bridge almost popped out on me there. <laughs> Uh, you say you was in court, uh, Professor Wooden there, what's that thing? Filing criminal action against people who tried to defraud our company. Why, last week, a pair tried to pull a phony automobile accident. We sent them up for ten years. Oops! Uh, yeah, my bridge again. Uh, I better hang on to the thing. I got an idea from here in it's going to be a pretty gummy conversation here. <laughs> yes, we uh, have another case coming up. Looks like the man's going to get 30 years. Mm. Uh, well, naturally, if you're busy prosecuting and everything, I don't want to keep you. So why don't you go on running along there? Uh, just, uh... Uh, hi, Kingfish. Uh, help me to a chair, will you? I just broke my leg on the front step. Oh. <laughs> you, you just broke your leg. I'd like to take a look at that. Uh, oh, look at, uh, good work, Kingfish. I see you got the phony doctor here already. No. Phony doctor? Yeah, yeah. I'll just lay down on the couch here, and then we'll be all set when that poor boob from the insurance company comes in. No. Phony doctors, broken leg. Stevens, what's going on here? Oh, well, sorry, Mr. Peterson. I guess you ain't met Mr. Brown here. He is the large hall jokester. A boy is a regular Sid Caesar, yeah. <laughs> well, what you talking about? I ain't no jokester, Kingfish. Yeah, of course you was a jokester, Mr. Brown. Because nobody but a jokester would come in here and pretend he broke his leg in front of a man from the insurance company who has already put four people in jail this week. 
You know something? For the first time, I just realizes how funny I is. Well, yes, that is quite a prank. Sort of pulling the leg here, huh? Yeah, yeah. Well, I have a sense of humor. Have to in my business, you know. Oh, yeah, yeah. Funny joke, all right. Seeing about breaking his leg in the phony doctor. Ha, ha, ha. Yeah. Ha, 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 ha. Well, Dr. Calhoun is here. Where's the poor southern victim that done broke his leg? Yeah, well, well, if it ain't Emma Jean Coker. Come in. <laughs> yeah, well, sir, I can tell without putting my glasses on that this is a $900 fracture. <laughs> oh, I, I didn't notice you had company here, Kingfish. Yeah. Uh, uh, look here. Uh, this here man that's staring at me with that jaily look. <laughs> he ain't... He is. Hello. <laughs> uh, uh, Mr. Peterson. Uh, yes, Mr. Stevens. Will you tear up the policy or shall I? <laughs> Yes, sir, mister, uh, there is the $900 for the back taxes. Yes, sir, there you is. Fine. Now, this settles your account with the Income Tax Bureau, Mr. Simpson. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, we went through everything to get this money, mister. Uh, we had to take a loan on our car, raise a mortgage on the large hall. Oh, yes, sir, even sold some of our old clothes. Well, you realize your debt to the Bureau comes first. Oh, yes, sir, oh, yes, sir, we does that, yes, sir. Fine. Now, I'm taking this money right over to my superior. All right, sir. Good day. Good day, sir. Good day. Goodbye. Well, Andy, now we goes up and gets the $2,500 from Mrs. Simpson, and that leaves us $1,600 to the good. Yeah, Kingfish, it sure is a comfort to know we got Mrs. Simpson and her $2,500 worth of blubber to fall back on. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Yes, there we are. Nine hundred dollars. He settled the claim in full. Wonderful, honey. You know this missing husband racket works even better here than it did in California. (laughs) Friends, this week you have a chance to really cut your cost of living. Rexall's gigantic one-cent sale begins next Wednesday morning. The only nationwide sale where you can buy two guaranteed Rexall products for the price of one plus a penny. And this unmatched offer applies to literally hundreds of drug and household needs, plus more than 60 super specials. Items like bath towels, toothbrushes, vitamins, stationery, priced so low you'll hardly believe your eyes. Take a tip from Harlow Wilcox. Let your pennies save you dollars. During Rexall's greatest one cent sale, Wednesday through Saturday, at Rexall drugstores everywhere. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, visit your Rexall family drugstore. And above all, don't forget to exercise your right as an American citizen and get out and vote. Thank you and good night. See you next Sunday. Remember, Rexall's nationwide one cent sale begins next Wednesday morning. The sale where you get two guaranteed Rexall products for the price of one, plus a penny. Remember, next Wednesday through Saturday, just step inside a Rexall store and buy twice as much for a penny more. Be sure to be with us next week at the same time when your Rexall druggist will again present the Amos and Andy Show. Stay tuned for the Edgar Bergen Charlie McCarthy program, which follows immediately over most of these same stations. This is the CBS Radio Network.